Hey, hey, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing well. It's Monday, uh, Monday evening. It's six o'clock here in LA. And we're going to be getting into some guitars in Logic Pro. Now, I'm doing this because I tracked guitars this morning in a session. And I thought, hey, you know, people probably want to know, like, what's the next step after you track and record a guitar player on a track? Like, wh what's the next step? What are you going to do? Do you just like get to mixing? Do you just start throwing effects on everything? Do you throw amp simulations on everything? Um, do you bounce it? Do you or do you ship it directly? Like upload to Spotify, <laughs> distro kit it? Uh, no, there's actually quite a few steps when it comes to producing a record and when it comes to guitars and guitar tone. So today I thought it'd be fun to kind of share my process with you guys. Um, if you're here, say what's up. If you're here and you like what you get out of this live stream, which is going to be hopefully very, very useful and helpful to you, please share the show. Just share it to your Facebook page, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me, say what's up, leave a comment, give a thumbs up, like anything, you know, this is all free, all free game. I'm just giving you free game from the studio today. All right. So um, I just appreciate if you guys do a little bit of reciprocation here. Just share the show, share the channel, subscribe to the channel, show love. All right. I appreciate every single one of you that shares this shit. And a lot of you come through, you take, you take, you take, and you never share. You never comment. You never like. It's like, why are you even here? Right? So I appreciate y'all that uh, do share. Philippe is one of them. What's up, man? How are you? And uh, he's across the world right now. We're back. We're back in action, baby. So uh, I hope that you guys get a lot out of these live streams. I try to do them as often as possible. I have been so busy lately. I'm trying to finish up records. I got my own records I'm working on. Um, I got really cool projects coming up that I'm excited to share with you guys. So uh, yeah, the more the merrier, you know, just keep sharing. I really appreciate it. Brian, you're in the right place right now because you are a guitar player and you're going to get a shit ton out of this stream. Um, I will, with these live streams, I'm going to start putting them up on my YouTube, the replays, but I'm only going to have them for members of the channel because I found that like, if I just keep giving y'all like way too much game, it, a lot of y'all just don't want to reciprocate. You just don't fucking do anything back. It's like, you don't even share the shit. Yo, it's good to see you. He approves the message. Good. All right. So let's get into it. I loved it, man. Great solo. Uh, Philippe did a little solo guitar solo on haunted by you. I thought it was really, really fun. I'll have to share that with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, like start hitting the like button, share the show, like show some love. I'm done. I'm done asking you guys for anything. Now I'm going to give you guys a shit ton of value. You ready? Let's go. All right. So I tracked the guitars today. I tracked the guitars in uh, Logic Pro, which is my, it, it's, it's my DAW of choice, but it's not necessarily the only DAW I use. I use Pro Tools. I use anything and everything. I've used FL Studio, Ableton Live, I've used Cubase. My first DAW I've ever used in my whole entire life on the computer was Cubase VST5 or VST5.1 or some shit like that. So I've used them all. Um, so when you guys like, yeah, FL gang over here, like shut up. It's a DAW. They all pretty much do the same shit. All right, but I'm gonna show you today how to freak your guitars and get these guitars really, really tight and precise and the editing tools in Logic. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of play a little snippet of the song for you. This one's from Josh Rose and we're working on it right now. We're finishing it up. It's called Money Moves. Kind of a disco funk pop kind of vibe. I'm feeling reckless, feel like blowing all my lips Feel like a man, I'm a rolling stone prince From the beginning, you already know the ending You can be my Yoko, oh no, I'll be a linen Won't you talk to me? Tell me where is your mind at? Those money moves must have made you didn't find them Won't you talk to me? Cause I'm
look at all that ass. All right, so a little snippet for you. Now, what we're talking about today, and this is going to be a pretty short live, we're going to be talking about guitars. And we're really going to lock in on guitars because a lot of you guys need a lot of help with guitars. I don't know what it is, but um, guitars are a hard instrument for a lot of people. First thing you need is a good player. <laughs> like straight up, let's be real. You need a great player and someone that understands the genre. So if they don't understand disco, pop, funk, all that stuff, they're not going to be good players on this track. If they're rock guitar players, they're not going to play this right. They're just not going to voice the chords right, you know? So uh, I got my buddy on here. His name's Marco Flores. He's um, amazing. I love him. He's a great dude. And we work on a shit ton of stuff together. And I always, with all my clients... A lot of the times I use Marco with a lot of my clients because he can play a lot of variety of stuff. Kind of a session player here in LA. Okay? Yeah, look for that disco ball. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High five. What's up? So if you guys just uh, entered in, say what's up, share the show, show some love, throw some thumbs up, you know, get a little bit involved here, ask questions. I'll try to answer them. So the first thing I'm going to do with any of my guitars, right, is I want to have my groove uh, figured out. Right. So I always want to be cutting and editing my guitars to my groove. My groove would be my bass line in this and my drums. OK, so I'm going to go down to my drums and my bass and I'm just going to bring all my drums and bass up to where the guitars are. I just do that automatically. Now, you can see there's a lot of stuff we've been experimenting with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. One thing you can do in Logic that really helps to clean shit up is when you have a track like you're like, I'm not using this, but you got all these plugins on here. Right. You want to take these tracks and you want to turn them off. So to get that on off button, you want to right click on the track header and you want to go to track header components and you want to make sure on off is clicked. Okay. So you turn on off. See how it disappeared. Go back track header components, turn on off back. So you can turn the track off, which does not bypass these plugins, believe it or not, and does not save on processing. It actually just helps it. So you don't have anything playing randomly when you do hide the tracks. I just do it as a safety. So let's turn off all the plugins here on both these tracks, mute them, turn them off. I mean, I got like all these different things I'm doing. Okay. And then we're going to right click and we're going to hide selected tracks, or you can use control H here on my uh, key commands. Bam. Now those are cleaned up. Same thing here. Anything I'm not using, I just want to mute and I want to bypass and I want to turn off. Okay. So I'm just going bam, turn off and bypass all the plugins on the channel. Right? This is just cleanup stuff. I'm just showing this to you guys because this is part of the process. Hide selected tracks. Now, this guy, I don't know what this is, nor do I care. Delete. I'm just going to get rid of it. I don't care about that one at all. It's some bullshit. All right. I don't like bullshit in my session. All right. So classic uh, electric piano. Electric piano here. This is all stuff that we're messing around with. Turn it off. Uh, go to X. If you go to the mixer, you could turn off stuff all at the same time. Right? So, bam. And then you can right click on the track and you could say hide selected tracks. Now that's one thing. You just want to clean the session up. Make sure you don't have any shit going on uh, here. We got a pad chorus. There's nothing there. Just delete the track. Now we got a little bit of a cleaner palette here. Now for when I'm working with like drums, bass, guitar, I want to color everything a certain scheme. For my drums, I always color them like an orange or off orange brown kind of color. Okay. So these are all drums. I'm going to right click on here or you could say option C. That's going to pull up your color palette. I'm going to go orange or this kind of like orange brown kind of thing, right? I don't know. Find something in between here. All right. So that's like a good color for that. Now the base, I want to do the base in like a purple or something. I just have my own color schemes. You guys use whatever you want to use. Okay. So that's purple for guitars. I always use red. So if I go up to my guitars and, and I do colors because you want to be able to look at the session and not go like, what, where's my guitars? Where's my bass? Where's my, you guys fumble around. You waste so much time and that's why you're not efficient. That's why you mess up edits, all that shit. So don't do that. Um, I can see right here, this is not being used. It's completely muted, but I might use it. I'm going to check those comps. So here we go. We're going to grab all the guitars, every single guitar. Option C, we're going to go red with these. So now automatically I can look at this at a glance and I can go red guitars, drums down here, right? So I can grab all the drums and the bass and all that, right? So I got all these guys down here, which are all drums and bass and all that. And this is my groove here. And then this is my guitars on top. Now we're working on the guitars. So if I go over this, I'm just going to highlight all this and zoom in on that. That's my big picture. All right. Now I'll grab all of these and we're going to solo them out. 
So now I can see just my guitars and my bass, which is my groove. Now let's listen to this, and this is what we're going to be copying and editing to. Automatically, you're gonna hear things are off timing, you know, all that shit. I don't worry about any of that, any of that before I comp, okay? So I always want to comp first and then I time. Because for example, let's like let's just really listen to these guitars. And you can also visually see them. Like you could see what's going on with this. And right here, I could see this guitar is doing something different than this guitar. And I want these to be doubles. I want them to be pretty much the same thing. Okay. So automatically I know I need to listen to this part. All right, so what am I listening to in that when I'm just listening right there? I'm listening for the notes to be similar or the same pretty much, right? So I want the notes, the sustain of the notes, the uh, the intonation of the notes to be the same. I want them to be bam 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 not bam 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 bam, bam. you know, like I don't want those to be out or, you know, weird or different. So that's what I'm listening for when I mute like that. I always take like multiple takes of the guitar so that I have something to comp from. So if I zoom out, you can see I have a comp folder. Like I have multiple takes on this, this folder and I, I accidentally had everything highlighted. But if I go in here, I could see there's different takes and I've already comped some of this as I was recording on the fly. I do that all the time, right? I'm like, yo, Marco, you played this a little too different. Let's take that part again. And I just punch that section, right? So that's what I did. Now let's get into kind of fixing whatever's different, right? So right here, we want to look at these notes. See how this note is like, these are all kind of like pretty much the same. They sound the same to my ear. So I like that. And these little scuffs, I like those scuffs to be the same. So if I see stuff like this, I just cut it out. Bam, get rid of it, right? Same thing here. Like I don't want any of these scuffs in between. Now you might want that because you want more human feel. I'm not looking for that with the guitars. I have tons of stuff going on on this session and I know exactly what I'm looking for. Another thing, see these notes? These are kind of like, this one's a little longer than this one. I want to go into my comp and see if I can find something a little bit shorter. Like what's this one look like? Okay, they're about the same. Cool, that's fine. We're going to take that one. All right, now I'll go in here and just look at all the scuffs and look at everything. Like here, we got like this kind of stuff is fine because see how it kind of matches up and if you want to really zoom in on the notes, see that? Now we can see like the in-betweens, the little chick, chick, which is cool. We like that. We like the human feel, but we want them to be equal on the sides. I don't want something to take your ear and pull it or like make you think about something like, oh, what the fuck was that weird noise that happened in the right speaker, but didn't happen in the left. I don't want that to happen. So on this part, I'm just going to literally get rid of these scuffs. Bam. All right. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm just going in and I'm like, yo, is this like pretty similar or is it too much? Is it too different? And then I might listen like that's not bad. It's got the like it has a little pickup note there. Right. Cool. Don't mind it. All right. So here we're going to go bam, bam, bam. And I'm very, very meticulous about this stuff. And I usually am not talking through it. So I use, I, I usually go a lot faster than this, but look, I'm looking at all these scuffs and here I'm not seeing enough of a scuff. I'm just going to get rid of it. Now by scuff, I just mean like little, um, you know, little ticks on the strings and, and rhythmic stuff. Like for example, this guy, this has too much of this and this is super clean. Let's get rid of it and get rid of it on both tracks. Always. Okay, so I'm going through. I'm like, yeah, yeah, visually this looks pretty good. Okay, so this guy, this note, let's see if we can beat it. Do we have something we could comp from here? No. All right, let's check the other comp, right? So where did where the hell did that go? It was like a visual weirdness that just happened there. My zooming. All right, so let's let's check. Uh, I don't have a comp up here, so we gotta live with this 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 note being a little bit longer on this side. That's okay. All right, so let's clean up the ends here. Just do some housekeeping, get rid of that. Now, once you have this and you have like a comp and you've gone and you've gotten rid of the scuffs and the in-betweens like this, you want to definitely match that because you don't want like silence on this side, but not on that side, right? 
And yeah, I'm kind of OCD with this shit. I'm sorry. Okay, so now what we want to do is we can go in here. We can highlight the, all the regions and we can hit equals. And that'll, that'll make a contiguous region. But with this, because it's not a comp, we don't want to do that because it brings the scuffs back, if that makes sense. <laughs> all right, so here we want to go bam. And then before you flatten something, see, because we got a comp folder and we got different takes and shit. Before you go and flatten this, you need to go command D and duplicate it and option drag this down, right? So you have a copy that you can always go back to. And I do that every time I'm going to edit from any comp folders, okay? You should always have that. You need a way to go back because if you're like, oh shit, that's not right. Do I have a different thing in that folder? Well, I already flattened it and I don't have it anymore. So don't do that. Don't be dumb. Okay, so I'm going to put this. I'm going to say guitar, um, guitar right uh, rhythm comp folders. Bam. And then I'm going to mute it. And guess what? Turn it off. That's right. And then we're going to bypass all this. And we're going to hide it. And all this is, is like our little like safety net. We can go back on it if we need to. But because this is all good to go, I'm going to highlight all these and I'm going to go to where it says A here. So you have, uh, you have this down arrow. You have A, which is showing you the comp or the takes. Um, and then you also have this edit mode. Um, the difference between this edit mode is swipe comp right? So that's the, the circles where there are circles like this in a, in a pyramid scheme or edit. Okay. Edit is this. Okay. If I go in here, I can move the comp around within the folder, right? So better example is in an actual comp folder that has multiple takes. So let's go back to swipe comp here, but like, for example, this one, see, so if I had like different takes in here, right. And I wanted to move those around. Let's go in here and I can literally move that around in the comp. Okay. So I can move it around. I can pull it out. Right. Etc. So that's going to allow you to edit within the, the take folders. That's what the, the scissors are for. It's like you can now edit within the folder. Right. Uh, perfect example. Let's go to this one, turn it to edit mode. And let's say like we wanted to move this guy back to match. See that? <laughs> so we can literally do that in edit mode. You could cut this and you could edit it. So you can go like that. So now when you're swipe comping, you can actually get those in perfect time instead of worrying about the timing issues. A lot of people don't know about that with logic and, and you have to. Uh, a lot of the times I use this edit mode when something gets cut off. For example, like let's say you recorded, but it looks like that, right? And then you have it in swipe comp mode, for example, and you go to pull it out and this is cut off still, right? So for example, it was like, let's say it's like this, right? Like it was like this, but this was cut off. Like, let's just chop it, delete it, right? Oh, and you're like, how do I get my take back? This happens to everybody. They're like, dude, how do I, when I pull it out, it's gone. What the fuck, bro? So you got to go into edit mode. You expand the folder, the comp, right? And then you can pull out the take. But if you have it, I just undid it. If you have it in swipe comp mode, you cannot pull this out it's in swipe comp it's swiping and comping right you're not editing so hopefully that that solves some problems for you guys I, I know a lot of people run into that so edit mode will allow you to pull this back out okay same thing here oh i need to pull all these out okay cool pull them all out get it all right if that was useful for anybody please throw a thumbs up share the show <laughs> Share the fuck show, bitch. All right, and then we're going to go back to swipe comp on all these, right? And remember, we already got these comped. Um, so I'm going to grab all of these, and I'm going to put them back. And that one as well. So these are all comped. So let's grab all those. Let's go to the A, and let's flatten and merge. Flatten and merge is going to flatten the comp folder, and it's going to merge it and put fades in between everything. Bam. So now you can see, like, it didn't see the edits like you can see where the the space is the dead space cool it kept all of our edits awesome so now we have these two right everybody good on that you guys feeling good about that shit <laughs> cla with mix preps gotcha oh cla doesn't work in uh, logic though you were works in pro tools so this is not about uh, this is not about like any of that stuff. This is about using Logic Pro and, and doing guitars in in Logic Pro. <laughs> There's Josh Rose himself, the artist himself. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hit that thumbs up button. Let's go. 
All right, so now we got that, right? We're like, okay, we got this comped, we flattened it. We're feeling really good about that. Let's zoom back out of the take because sometimes this is overwhelming. You're like, am I clipping? Did I record this really hot? No, we're good. So now from here, let's listen because the problem I'm having right now is the timing on where these things are hitting, right? So again, I'm comping and I'm working from the actual beat and the, the groove, okay? I don't have any vocals in here right now. I just have the guitar, bass, and drums, all right? So let's listen to it. All right, so that sounded really sick. I love it, but you can tell right away this one's off, right? Now, a lot of people uh, will do this manually. I just do this the easy way. So highlight the, the folder, just the clip, the region that you're working on, and then hit option F, which is gonna open up your flex time. I find that flex time polyphonic is always the best. Doesn't matter if it's a monophonic bass part, vocal, whatever. Use the polyphonic, it's the best algorithm, I think, in Logic Pro, okay? Now, we can highlight in and we can see uh, uh, some information here. We can see like it's probably overdoing this a little bit, right? Like it has like uh, markers everywhere, like marker here, marker here. Okay, so the markers are pretty good. Let's just leave them. It's good. So if you wanna fly through this stuff, I usually will go, okay, cool, looks good. You know, you can see like an extra marker there, which really isn't necessary. This is more like a bam, right? Um, but to make it fast, you want to highlight your region, go up to the region box, region editor box, inspector box, whatever you want to call it. And you want to go to quantize and you want to just go swing a whatever, 16th, eighth note, whatever your guitar is playing on. It doesn't really matter. Just turn on the quantize so that you can start to move around with your markers. Okay. And what we're gonna see here is it automatically just quantized the guitars, okay? And I'm just gonna zoom in here uh, so you can really see it locking in, okay? So this is the groove right here. And you can see this one's off, but I know that this is just one hit. So if I wanna get rid of this marker, just double click it, right? Easy. Same thing here, double click any markers you don't want. So this is good, that's good. And I'm also visually looking at stuff like, this is cool. Like these are all on 16th notes. They're all going to make sense. Get rid of that one. Cause it's not like a double hit. That's not like a ding, ding, you know, it's just, it's a slide. So it's seen that as a transient, that slide. So, um, so this is like a bam, 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 which you can quantize that, but I like to not do it just because I don't want to have many artifacts I try to stay away from artifacts as much as possible i don't want it to sound like it's been edited in any sense okay uh, another thing you can do to hold the groove a little bit better is if you hold down option you can move these markers to the transient so like if you like this transient better than this transient uh which would kind of swing it ahead you can grab that and move the marker and then lock it to the grid if you wanted to do that like say you wanted to swing something back a little bit right i do this all the time i'll take this guy and i'll move him to the very beginning and then i'll quantize to that and that's going to hang the guitar back now if you do that with this guitar you have to do it with the double right i don't mind this i think this was a, a good decision with logic like they it took the the up the positive on the transient and locked it so we're good. We're good. Good, good, good. Okay. And then I'm looking at all these and I'm going, okay, I'm just reading the grid. I'm looking at these 16th notes and I'm looking at the grid up here. Okay. Now you can also change from your snap. You can go in here and you can change your snap to um, whatever you want, a division. So that could be the 16th notes. So for example, like this would be your snap. Now your, your shit's going to snap to 16 or if you go up here, 24ths, right? It'll snap to whatever grid. <laughs> that's sometimes helpful if you're you know exactly what you're working in if it's a triplet thing and you're trying to get those drums to hit on that triplet i would rather use that than the smart because the smart can be really weird okay so that's a really good way to just like lock to the 16th notes okay very very good way to do it uh, i'm just gonna leave it on smart because i'm i know like what i'm looking at and what i'm looking for i mean i recorded these guitars i know what i'm trying to get out of them etc so just going through this and we're just going to kind of eyeball all this right I'm just eyeballing it, making sure there's no weirdness. 
and going through the whole thing. Same thing, these scuffs, like you don't really need these to be quantized, right? Like double click that. <clears throat> or maybe you do. Maybe you want those kind of tighter, right? Cool. Do it. It's up to you. But I usually go by feel. It's always going to be feel. Like right here, you might want to put a marker here, right? And go like that and then just drag this to be more on the 16th. Might give you a little bit more bounce. Might just feel a little bit better, a little bit more pocketed. And pocket is everything when it comes to disco, funk, uh, pop music, hip hop. Like it's all rhythm, you guys. Like this is all pocket. Okay, so I'm just going through. I'm just making sure everything's cool. This one. So, boing, boing, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, lock it. Why not? Quantize it. As long as it doesn't give you a weird kind of thing going on. Right? So I, I like, sometimes Logic will try to like get the note to end, right? On, on the downbeat or whatever. If you do that, you can do this and you can go, okay, yeah, I like that idea. Logic, good idea. Let's lock it and make it end right on that downbeat. Right, and that makes it tighter. So you're not going, you're not overlapping on this next note. <laughs> really good way to do it. Okay, so now we're locked in with this one. We can use this as a guide for this one up here. So same thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna get some water. I'm like fucking, my throat's going crazy. It's been all windy in LA and it gets really dry. And I like go on runs and bike rides and shit up the hill. And today's there's just like shit blowing everywhere. So like I have all this like crazy dust and stuff in my throat. You guys have any questions so far? Oh, talking about coloring. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Philippe, coloring is everything, man. Like in, in Pro Tools, I get even crazier with the coloring for sure. Okay, feeling good. All right, great. Okay, so now what I have is I have like my locked in groove here. So let's go in here and do the same exact thing. Now, if you just hit this button, it's going to automatically find the best um, algorithm for this. And it'll probably go to polyphonic. See? Auto. Now, this is where you don't have to just hit quantize. You can really, like, lock in the groove with the other groove. So you could take these and just, like, move them marker per marker, right? And you can really do it that way if you wanted to do that. Um, I'm just going to do it the easy way, right? So make sure your shit's highlighted. Go up here, go to 16A. 16A means no swing. I don't know why they call it uh, 16A. Like it's a swing pattern when there's actually no swing on 16A. Makes no sense. But logic swing is kind of shit, to be honest. I like MPC swing. I like Pro Tools has great swing because they have like actual MPC swing. Logic's like, yeah, you can make your own swing from templates. It never works right. They need an update on this shit. So here, um, this is all locked in. Like, if you don't want that marker, don't use that marker. If you do want that marker and you want that to happen, then do it on this one too so that they're really locked in. See how they'll end at the same time as well? Like, that's just going to help your groove. You know what I mean? So, cool. And then this note's a little bit longer. We'll address that. That's not a big deal. As long as it doesn't pull your ear too much. I always have to hear shit. All right, same thing here. I'm just going to lock that in. And then you have this little scuff here that's not in this one. We might get rid of that. All right. Going through this and cool, cool. So you got a little double vibe here, but we don't have it down here. Something to note. Like I get, I get fucking anal about this shit. All right, get rid of that one because we don't want that. If you want anything to groove better, you should do it on this one here, right? Oh, here's another thing. If you go over this and you go down, you can see this is like three markers. This will add a marker to the left and right, okay? So for example, if I have a marker here, it'll go bam, and it'll pull in between those markers, right? So you're not adjusting anything to the left and nothing to the right of those markers. So if you do that, you want to make sure that you don't have anything over here. And if you do, you need to make sure you have a marker. Hopefully that makes sense. It's like this three marker thing, right? This right here. So now I can pull within those markers. Now, if you want to add, like let's undo all that. If you want to add another marker on each side, you need to go to the bottom and where it goes plus, and then you can go bam, and that'll add one to the left, one to the right. But this one already has one, right? So it's like already there. So I think that's fine. I'm not even going to worry about that one. I might even just delete that because it's not on the bottom one here, right? 
Okay, so let's go here. And you can see this note's a little bit longer. Again, use your ears. Don't don't typically just look at this and be like, oh, that's wrong. I should delete that. Like, listen first. Okay, and then I'm going through here. This is a double scuff here. Just take note of all this stuff. And bam, bam, bam. I'm looking at I'm looking at the top one and I'm trying to lock in the groove on that one, right? Do 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 do. Dude. Okay, so if this is a problem here and this one's ending longer, you might want to go here and pull this one a little bit, right? You might want this to end a little bit longer as well. Right? You're not gonna you're not gonna hear that as an artifact. But if you do that, it might feel weird, like something's longer, something's not, your ear's gonna perceive that. So you could do it either way. You could go, hey, maybe this one's too long, right? So let's add a marker here and just pull this back, right? And then maybe make up the difference so you have less artifacting. I do that shit all the time. Right? Little easy way to make it groove a little bit more. And sometimes you want it to groove even more by being shorter. So you might want to go like this, right? And make these like... You know what I mean? Like it's all up to you and all up to what your taste is and what you're trying to do. Um, for now, I'm actually going to make this one a little bit shorter and this one a little bit longer. So your ear just can't perceive it. Okay. Cool, and then we're just going through this. Get rid of that. Okay, so that was a good move on Logic's side, right? Like it's making this end at the same time as that one, or close. Good, good, good. All right, now let's hear this all kind of fixed and comped and timed. All together now. So as I'm hearing this, I'm going, I actually like those scuffs kind of being like, oh, it's random on this side and then there. It kind of gives it a little bit more groove to me. I like that vibe. <clears throat> yeah, you're going to hear that when, I'm, when my mic's open. When I was just showing you those, you're going to hear double. <laughs> hey, uh, Josh, uh, I'm getting some latency. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, you guys have any questions at all? Okay, feeling good. He's good. Sounds cool. All right. So really, like, that's what I wanted to show you in today's stream. Like, this is how I start to edit all my guitars. I'm literally going to go through and do this with every single pass of everything. Now, some of this we uh, we probably flew over, right? Like, these parts. <clears throat> uh, these parts on, like, the verses. Like, you can see right here. These are flown. This is flown. That's flown. So I'll just probably have to take this one and edit it and then fly it over, fly it over, right? So there's some stuff that's kind of duplicate. Um, and then you got chorus guitars. But yeah, for the most part, that's what you're trying to lock in. Another thing you can do is really make sure that the bass and the guitars are locked in. So I haven't done any timing adjustments to the bass. So what you might notice is like the bass is a little bit later than the guitars kind of vibe, right? you can see in the in the actual waveform, right? So these are kind of a little bit off, which is fine. Um, but you might want to have those more grooved together, like really tight pocketed. Um, I like to have those just a little bit more wavered as far as like, I'd rather have the bass and the drums really locked together. And then the guitars can be a little bit grooving off of those. And that just gives you a little bit more swing. It gives you a little bit more human kind of vibe. If you lock everything in, it starts to get really mechanical. It's like boom, ka, boom, 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 ka. You know what I mean? It, it gets too mechanical. So you got to find those like those nice like middle grounds between, hey, this is way too locked in and, and quantized. And uh hey, this is grooving too much and it's like too off from the from each other. You know what I mean? Like you, you got to really be careful with that. Like here, let's do this as an example. Um, let's quantize the bass uh, to show you what I'm talking about. So like let's just chop the bass right there and let's work on just this pattern here, right? And let's turn this on. Monophonic is fine for bass, but typically polyphonic will work better. See, and it just went polyphonic on it. Just the way it works. I don't know why. 
Um, it's just a better algorithm. Logic is due for an update. Let's be real. We need to go to like Logic 11 by now. Okay, so for example, like on these parts, if the bass is hitting on any of these notes, like here, you might want to like take this guy and go bam, right? Just really pocket in on the same hits. And I do that, that's like a really good trick. Another really good trick, and I hope this, I hope all this information is really helpful for you guys making records and wanting to make better records. Uh, another really good trick is to pocket the very first downbeat of everything. So if you have a bass hitting on the downbeat or a kick drum hitting on the downbeat of the one, <laughs> when it's the very first thing you hear, you might want that to be right on the one, right? You might want that to just boom, boom, bump, bump, bump. And then everything else can groove past that, if that makes sense, right? So right there, I just like basically just made that, lock that in on the one. Okay. And then I'll go through and I'll look at the guitars and where the guitars are vibing and where they are uh, pocketed. And I'll make sure that anywhere where the guitars are ending or like here, that's kind of a downbeat area, right? Might do that. And then I might just find anywhere where the guitars are playing with the bass and lock those hits in. And that'll really do a lot. You'll, you'll be really surprised. Downbeat here, right? So downbeat here, you might want to go boop. Like just let it hit the downbeat, then let let the bass groove, let it let it uh, lay back like that. That's cool. Right here, you don't want the bass and the guitar flaming, so do that, right? And then don't do that. And then, oh, so see how that worked? See how this one moved with it? It's because you have this in between. So what you need to do is option drag this over, right? And then you can do take this guy, and now it's still there, but that's gonna stay, right? So for example. See how like I had that and then I went boom and it made that marker. Just pull that marker over here now. It's just gonna it's gonna make it so that note doesn't move. So I'm just taking the downbeat and anywhere where the uh, the bass and the guitar are doing the same thing or they're hitting at the same time and just lock the groove in. Say so right there and then maybe here. And this is really gonna help your shit sound way more pocketed, right? Okay, cool. And here. 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 I know this is really fun to watch me do this, huh? <laughs> yeah, man, it's sick, bro. I love the way that you're clicking the mouse, bro. So if I get rid of this one, for example, you see how everything pulled forward? So don't let that happen. Just take that and move it over here. Or you can just turn this guy on, right? And get rid of him. So two different ways to do that. What do they say? Like there's a million ways to skin a cat or whatever, which is a terrible saying. Like who wants to skin a cat? That's, that's absolutely horrid. But, um, you know, you get the, you get the saying. Cause I always have people online like, yeah, you know, you can do it like this too. And you're like, yeah, so what? <laughs> do it that way then. I don't give a fuck how you guys do this. I'm just showing you my way of doing shit. All right, so bam. Oh. And bam. This guy. Let's see. And just like really listen when we play this back, like how much better the pocket is and the groove of the bass. I might have fucked some shit up, but we'll see. We'll hear it. All right. Now we got this bass all pocketed with the guitars and the drums are obviously uh, pretty on the grid as well because they're programmed. Let's hear this. Feel like a man, I'm a rolling stone a prince From the beginning, you already know the end You can be my yokel, oh no, I'll be a linen I'm feeling reckless, feel like blowing all my lips Feel like a man, I'm a rolling stone a prince From the beginning, you already know the end 
You can be my yoko. Oh no, I'll be your limit. Won't you talk to me? Tell me where is your mind at? Those money moves must have made. Man, it's so crazy. Like, <laughs> I don't know. If you guys can't hear that and feel that, like, you should quit. You shouldn't be in music. Like, you literally should go work a day job and, like, you know, move up the corporate ladder because it's so fucking different. Like, even when we hit the parts that are not pocketed, it feels so sloppy to me. Like, just listen, going from this part into the second part, it, it's so much more sloppy and, like, loose and, like, it feels erratic almost now. <laughs> I'm feeling reckless, feel like blowing all my lips Feel like a man, I'm a rolling stone, a prince From the beginning, you already know the end You can be my Yoko, oh no, I'll be a lady Won't you talk to me? Tell me where is your mind at? Those money moves must have made you didn't find them Won't you it's almost like the guitars are like, yo, what are you playing? Like, are you a part of the band? Like, get in the pocket. You know what I mean? So the, the pocket is very, very important is what I'm trying to show you guys. If you don't get the pocket right in modern music or in any music, I don't care what it is. If the pocket's not right and the pocket being right does not always mean like 100% quantized. Like, I'm not quantizing the bass. You know what I mean? Like, this is this is very hung back and swung. The bass is. Like, look at this. This is not on the grid. You know what I mean? Like, this is played in. Very, very live. But the parts that are, like, locked in with the guitar and the drums and stuff make it very much like boom, 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 boom. It makes it dance so much better. So that's it. That's really like, uh, yeah, guitars are hard. Uh, no, not hard panned. I never hard pan um, in Logic. I feel like it's too wide. So that's a great question, by the way, Philip. Uh, what I do typically with, like, when I'm panning left and right. So, like, for example, these guitars here. Let's go here and just play the guitars. Right? So that's... Um, what 37 37 right i don't i try not to pan hard like here's what panning hard sounds like like if i if i went like hard pan on this shit it just feels like out of the it feels out of the the spectrum already know the end. i'm feeling reckless feel like blowing all my lips feel like it's almost like it's almost like feels phasey or something, you know, like it doesn't feel right when you do that in logic. And I don't know why I couldn't tell you the science behind it or anything, but I like like a tight focused, especially with this genre, because this genre is a focused genre, right? Like it doesn't matter what kind of like funk um, or like disco or anything like that that you listen to it's usually pretty fucking focused unless you're really getting funky right like parliament gets really funky and then it's like oh i don't know where the groove is this is really erratic and pretty wild um but you know because the groove just gets so loose you know you're like swinging really hard um but as far as panning goes I always am like paying attention to what the vocal's doing and I'm like, how is it helping the vocal? Like, how is it, is it hugging the vocal? Is it stepping on the vocal? If it's stepping on the vocal, I might pan a little bit harder. Um, but for the most part, I want it to be like, you know, I I'm listening for the stereo image. I'm feeling reckless, feel like blowing all my lips. Feel like a man, I'm a rolling stone, a prince. From the beginning, you already know the And a good trick sometimes is to do um is to do like a tighter pan on like verses. And then when you go to the chorus, you can stack up the guitars with maybe like four layers. So you have a left, right, left, right. And then you do some of them wider. Like here, 43, 43. So I went just a little bit wider on these guitars once you hit this pre-chorus area, just to change it a little bit. Tell me where is your mind at? I hear you so. 
So you hear how loose those are and how like when the transient hits your ear and it's different, it feels sloppy. And a lot of people don't go through this process and that pisses me off because it's the difference between like a pretty good record and a great record where you're like, ooh, that makes you want to dance. Something that everyone here has to understand, I don't care how long you've been making records or playing guitar or whatever, transients are what hit our ear the fastest and the hardest. The transients are like the initial attack of whatever instrument, right? So the snare drum, the the guitars, the bass, whatever. It's like the initial attack, the high end in it, right? Typically the high end because it's going to be that first hit, that initial hit. If we're talking about transients, we're talking about, if we really zoom in, we're talking about this very first hit right here. This is the transient right here, okay? So this transient is what makes you groove and what makes you know that something's on time or how to move. And it's the same thing with the snare drum and the kick drum and the vocals. Vocals have transients in them. It's the initial attack of whatever. And that is so important to music and to pocketing and to rhythm and to how we dance and how we move and how we hear things. And if those transients are all over the place, like for example, this guitar is hitting here and then it's hitting here and then it's like, it's kind of off and it's kind of sloppy, then it fucks everything else up. Like the transient of the guitar not being locked in and, um, you know, defined and phase coherent with the kick drum and the bass and all that stuff. You lack punch in your music. You lack definition. You lack immediacy. You lack things jumping out of the speakers and grabbing your attention, right? You lack uh, volume and loudness. Like people don't understand how important transients are. They literally think of this as like, oh no, it feels good. That feels good to me. And it's like, yeah, but you can hear that and you're like, that feels good to you. But then I can go through and do what I do and play you an AB and you'd be like, oh shit, how did you get it to be so much more impactful and like louder and more like defined and like, that's way better. How'd you do that? It's like, I just locked in the transients. I just got the phase right. Yeah, like I got the definition of the initial attacks right. That's where the attitude's at. That's where everything is. It's the difference also between uh, digital and analog, right? So analog softens the transients a lot of the time. And soft transients are, they're sometimes necessary for certain genres. You know what I mean? Like if you're playing acoustic guitar and you want like this really like, chill vibe you don't really want a whole lot of like attack and transient stuff going on you want more soft and like you know buttered out and smeared imaging and that's what analog does because of the non-linearities the tapes the tubes the transistors the transformers you know what i mean that's that's really what that com that that's where it comes from so that's why people like analog and digital combined because they like the immediacy of digital. They like the transients. They like how immediate that effect is. It's it's punchy. It's defined. Um, it's very accurate. But then they also like the analog nature of what it does for depth. And it does to like make things kind of blend and it makes it gooey. Yeah, don't pan hard pan everything. That'd be stupid. The reason you don't hard pan everything is because then you end up with big mono is what we call it. So remember, every time you pan something left and right, you get a center image to that thing. It's constantly why we double track, right? Like I always double things because if it's exactly the same on the left and the right, you're going to get a middle image. So if you're using any samples um, in your music and you're hard panning, you're going to get a center image. And if you keep getting that center image, it stacks up. It blocks the vocal. It uh, just sounds like mono, right? It doesn't sound stereo. It doesn't sound wider because you panned left and right. Like that's not how it works. The differences between left and right is what make things wider. I hope that makes sense. Do you guys have any questions before I get out of here? I wanted this one to be uh, pretty short, but uh, I do want it to be really helpful for you guys. <laughs> but the groove is always with parliament. That is facts. But you know, sometimes, sometimes like when you get a band that has played together so long, it's like they're all grooving off the grid together, right? So I think that that's a really important aspect for sure. Like you could put everything on the on the grid, and then groove off the hi hats or whatever. 
um, you're still not going to sound like Parliament because the players groove their own way. That's what it's all about, man. It's all about groove. A song makes you feel a certain way because of the groove, especially when it comes to like anything at this kind of pace or rhythm, disco, funk, soul, even pop, hip hop, all that shit. It's like you, you have to have the soul of the record. It has to make you like, it has to make you move some way, you know, even with punk rock, like it's like, it's going to be like, yeah, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, gets you riled up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, makes you maybe jump and bounce back and forth or whatever. But yeah, they're a unit. Well, well put. Um, hey, thanks, man. If you guys really liked it and got something out of it, please, please, please share it. Like share it with people. Subscribe to the channel. Tell people about the channel. I got some really cool stuff coming up here and it'll be uh, coming up around Nam. So I'm excited about that. And um, if any of you are going to Nam, let me know and we should connect. We should at least shake hands, you know, maybe have a beer or something. Good to see you, Chimmy. I haven't seen you in a while, bro. What's up? Yeah, jumping out of the speakers, man. That's that's like what I go for with every record. I want it. I want the music to like grab you and be like, "Hey, listen," <laughs> you know. Like I'm not trying to make elevator music. I'm not making background music for you know people to hang out at a cocktail lounge or whatever. I don't want to make background music. I want to make music that demands attention. You're welcome. You're very welcome. All right, y'all, look out for the record too. Josh Rose, Money Moves, coming out um, as soon as we finish it. We'll set a release date for probably about four weeks in advance. You guys will have to show love, pre-save the shit, and uh, just help us get the word out. Um, Radium Records, I'm producing a shit ton of records this year. I'm dropping my own records. I'm doing a bunch of collaborations with uh, different artists, different genres. Um, I'm doing collaborations with different uh, companies that I really fuck with as far as plugins and all that. So, you know, I'm just constantly trying to add value to you guys. I'm not ever asking you for anything. Like when I ask you to share the show, it's like, that's as much as I'm going to ask you for, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, um, not trying to make a million dollars off of doing live streams. <laughs> It'd be hella funny though but i appreciate you guys like honestly it means so much to me when you guys share it and i go on instagram and i'm like oh fuck they shared the live you know or they shared the show or they tagged me on this thing that they learned something from instead of you guys like pulling shit from me like learning something from me and then going out and talking to people like you know this stuff and you just know this and you're going to teach someone else like share it like tell people where you learned it from you know what i mean like it's so stupid not to do that what am I going to do? All I'm going to do is get you more exposure. All I'm going to do is share the post that you shared and tag you in it. You guys, are, like, you play the game wrong. You just don't understand it. Nobody cares that you know shit. They care that you, like, show where you got the stuff from. Give credit where due. Like, if I produce a record and someone doesn't put me on the credits, I'm not working with that person ever again. I don't care if they're huge, huge artist. I don't care if they're like the smallest artist in the world and they got all this money they're going to pay me. If they don't give me credit, there's no point in doing it. Music is not like a, uh, you're not going to become a billionaire from making music. You know, you become a billionaire when you make music, get a brand, and then you buy a sports team and you buy a business that makes a billion dollars. <laughs> all right. Hey, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, let's link up, Steve. I've been working on uh, on uh, surfing the jetty as well. Sounding so good. I'm so excited to share that one with you. Like that's gonna be a really fun one too. We're gonna roll that one out. We're gonna market it. It's gonna be hella fun, man. It's good to see you in the live stream too. All right, fam. I'm out of here. Happy Monday. Have fun. Go use these tools.